I want to take some time to talk about Ilhan Omar because she is dealing with something that no other member of Congress has to deal with. She is constantly bombarded with hatred and attacks and death threats and abuse all because of her identity, because she's a Muslim woman. And she's also criticized whenever she says basically anything. I mean, she dealt with universal condemnation when she spoke out against APAC, which her criticism was valid. She simply asked, why are we not allowed to question the monetary influence that APAC has on members of Congress when we do the same thing for other interest groups, the NRA, for example? So that led to her being condemned basically by everyone. It led to Donald Trump literally calling on her to resign. But even if she doesn't say anything, she still has to put up with abuse and discrimination just because she's a Muslim woman. For example, this poster was found at a public event that was sponsored by the West Virginian Republican Party. It was found at the state capitol where it literally links her to 9-11. Because she's a Muslim and because she was elected to Congress, it demonstrates that Americans forgot about the importance of 9-11. So she has to deal with so much bigotry, so much bullshit. And on top of that, she's spoken out about the uh, death threats that she received. In her own district, somebody wrote assassinate Ilhan Omar in the gas station uh, in the bathroom of one of the gas stations in her district. So she is facing this unique threat of constant abuse and harassment that nobody else has to deal with in Congress, and it's because she's a Muslim. Now, at a recent event that took place about a month ago, she spoke about why we all need to forcefully combat the hatred and misinformation and generalizations that are harmful against Muslim Americans. And this is what she had to say. Far too long, we have lived with the discomfort of being a second-class citizen. And frankly, I'm tired of it. And every single Muslim in this country should be tired of it. <laughs> Care was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. So you can't just say that today someone is looking at me strange, that I am going to try to make myself look pleasant. You have to say this person is looking at me strange, I am not comfortable with it, I am going to go talk to them and ask them why. Because that is a right you have. So she makes an incredibly important point there, and I want to reiterate what she's saying there. Because of the actions of some people who she does not identify with, that has led to generalizations that are harmful against Muslim Americans. Because of what happened on 9-11, many people now assume that all Muslims are like, those people. So it's an important point. And what she's saying is valid. We need to stand up against the hatred, against the bigotry that is being perpetrated against Muslim Americans now. But here's how Dan Crenshaw, congressman from Texas, decided to interpret that. First of all, he retweeted someone who took her out of context and claimed that she intentionally minimized 9-11, and she did so to justify the creation of a, quote, terrorist organization, which he claims CARE is, and then Dan Crenshaw responded by saying, first member of Congress to ever describe terrorists who killed thousands of Americans on 9-11 as some people who did something. Unbelievable. Actually, what's unbelievable is that a sitting member of Congress retweeted someone who took one of his colleagues out of context and claimed that CARE is a terrorist organization. That is what I find unbelievable. Because if you extrapolate further, then the implication is that since CARE is supposedly a terrorist organization, and since she supports said 
quote, terrorist organization, then she must have condoned the attacks on 9-11, which is why she, quote, minimized it, which is why people accuse us of forgetting about the importance of 9-11 since she was elected. I mean, do you see why posters like this are put up? It's because of ignorant statements like this, which proves the point that she made in her original speech. All Muslims are being generalized because of 9-11. And she's saying we need to stop generalizing. We need to combat this fear-mongering and hatred of Muslims. And what do they do? They prove her point. Unbelievable. And it doesn't matter what she says or does. This is not going to stop. They're going to continue doing this, and it's getting worse. Because guess what President Donald Trump decided to do? He tweeted out a video with the words, we will never forget, that played her out of context comments with painful imagery of planes flying to the Twin Towers, and then he actually had that tweet pinned for days. He finally unpinned it as of today, which is Monday, the time I record this video, but he had it pinned for days. Now let's call this what it is. This is a direct incitement of hatred. And for someone who already faces constant death threats and harassment and discrimination, he is exacerbating that problem. This will lead to her getting even more harassment and more death threats. That's what the sitting president just did. That is what I find unbelievable. And what's ironic to me is that for someone who's supposedly outraged that she minimized 9-11, there's nobody in the country who minimized 9-11 more so than Donald Trump, who literally was on tape bragging on 9-11 about how since the Twin Towers fell, his building was now the largest in, or the tallest in Manhattan. You have one of the landmark buildings down in the financial district, 40 Wall Street. Uh, did you have any damage or did you know what, what's happened down there? Well, it was an amazing phone call I made. 40 Wall Street actually was the second tallest building in downtown Manhattan. And, and it was actually before the World Trade Center was the tallest. And then when they built the World Trade Center, it became known as the second tallest. And now it's the tallest. And I just spoke to my people and they said it's the most unbelievable sight. So for someone who cares about the supposed minimization of 9-11, it doesn't get any worse than that. So what he did was he took a political opponent out of context for purposes of political expediency because he wanted to smear them. What's especially grotesque about this smear is that unlike most smears, this opens the door to harassment and threats. It incites hatred. But Donald Trump doesn't care about that. I'm sure he uh, is hoping that that's what's going to happen. And Dan Crenshaw, who arguably started this, quote, scandal, I think he needs to explain why he told a firefighter who survived 9-11 why he was, quote, too busy to talk about victim benefits. I mean, that doesn't just minimize 9-11. But you told a literal hero that you were too busy to talk about victim benefits. If that doesn't minimize 9-11, then I don't know what does. So these are all hypocrites who are lobbing bad faith attacks at Ilhan Omar for purposes of political expediency, and they don't care at all that this endangers her life, that it directly incites hatred against her. And what happened was exactly what we all predicted would happen. She received countless death threats. She put out a statement saying, since the president's tweet Friday evening, I have experienced an increase in direct threats on my life, many directly referencing or replying to the president's video. We are all Americans. This is endangering lives. It has to stop, but it's not going to stop because what Donald Trump does, what is a political tactic for him is to drum up fear about the other and just because she's a Muslim woman who wears a hijab, this allows Donald Trump to imply that individuals who are unlike you, individuals who we deem the other, they've infiltrated America and this is what they're doing. It's downright morally reprehensible. 
And for a sitting president to openly incite hatred against the sitting member of Congress, there's something really disgusting about this. Imagine if Obama tweeted out something like this. This is a really, really um, toxic political atmosphere, and I don't blame people for tuning out of politics because this is the type of bullshit that you have to deal with. And if you are a member of a marginalized community, this is the type of discrimination you have to put up with, where the president is openly trying to fearmonger about you and claim that just because of your identity, you want to minimize the suffering that was caused on 9-11. Understand this. There were Muslims in the Twin Towers that were the victims of the terrorist attack on 9-11. You know this, right? Muslim Americans in the Twin Towers died. So they were also the victims. M Americans of all colors and orientations and ethnic backgrounds were the victims. So to basically weaponize 9-11 and exploit that tragedy to attack your political opponents, that is morally fucking reprehensible. And Donald Trump is just a morally bankrupt joke of a human being. I don't know how he has support, but if you look at the comments, sadly, they all supported him. If you go to his Instagram where he also posted this, they all supported what he's doing. Uh, they supported him inciting hatred against a sitting member of Congress who already receives death threats regularly. It's disgusting.